Assalamu alaikum everybody, this is your Arabic teacher Sam and a very very warm welcome to episode 19 of the Arabic with Sam podcast. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys have had an awesome weekend. Um, it's been cold here in the UK. We have had a very cold um, you know, past week or so here in the UK. Uh, not so much here in Northampton, usually here um, in the Midlands and up north it's colder but um, but not not had much snow here. Anyways, uh, last week uh, we did a little um, we, we did an episode on uh, the number of days that there actually are until Ramadan. Um, you know because we are sort of on the the, the countdown now. We're about three months away from Ramadan now. Um, on that note, uh, before we get into the crux of the podcast, I just want to let you guys know uh, those of the Muslims among you who are listening um, and the non-Muslims, you might find it interesting too. But um, especially the Muslims, for us who are thinking about making sure that our relationship with the Quran is more meaningful by the time we come to the month of Ramadan. If you're a beginner and you'd like to learn the most frequently used um, vocabulary that's actually used in the Quran, go over to my Instagram account and over my Facebook as well. I'll, the, all the information will be over there too. But I'm essentially doing like a daily, like a word of the day from the most used words in the Quran and just doing them, just doing all of the most used words in the Quran every single day, all the way up to Ramadan. So, so far we've done five words and um, those five words alone comprise of about 15% of the vocabulary used in the entire Quran. You know, so, so for example, like the word min, the word min alone is used 3,226 times in the Quran. That word alone, you know, and you know that, that, that word alone is about 3% of all of the words used in the Quran. So the word min, the word Allah, the word la, the word fi, and the word inna, those five words together equal about 15% of the Quran. So it's really amazing, you know, how, how much of the Quran we can cover just by learning the right words. Um, yeah, cool. So it just, just sort of goes to show how important it is to learn the right stuff. Um, you know, if you if you really, really zone in on what you actually want to learn Arabic for, you can reach your goals far quicker. Um, yeah. So so if you're interested in that, go over to Instagram, go over to Facebook as well. Follow those pages if, if you're interested in that. But uh, today's episode is actually about the daily routine. Uh, this was actually suggested by one of the students. And um, yeah, one of the students thought that it'd be really cool if we could do something that's just a little bit more conversational, a little bit more spoken orientated. I know of the people who listen to the podcast, we have a good mix of people in the audience. Some people are some people are sort of learning because they're fascinated by Arabic grammar and they want to kind of learn to read and write, you know, more so and perhaps just learn Arabic for uh, reading classical texts and for Islamic purposes. And then we get sort of other people who are interested in doing Arabic, GCSE, A-level, learning Arabic as more like a modern foreign language. And it's good to have that mix. I, I, I try to kind of serve um, a mix of those things. So anyway, so yeah, we're going to talk about the daily routine. Um, I haven't been able to plan much because I've been so busy, but um, I think what might be a nice thing for us to do would be um, for me just to talk, speak in Arabic a little bit, just about my morning routine or something, just for us to get into it. I mean, it would just take too long for me to do like a whole daily routine. And, you know, it's, it's a hard topic anyway, because there are a lot of things that are in my daily routine, but just aren't relevant to somebody else's daily routine. But um, we'll go over, like, I'll, I'll just talk a little bit in Arabic and we'll talk about kind of what I said. And then maybe we'll hopefully come away from the lesson with... No, I don't know, you know, 10, 20 new words or something like that. Um, I'll keep an eye on the time. We'll, we'll try not to long the podcast out for too much, too long. We'll keep it under 25 minutes or something like that. And then afterwards, you know, I'll, I'll give some, um, I don't know, if there are kind of any cultural insights or kind of insights from literature and poetry and stuff that I can give to help you guys learn the vocab a little bit more um, with a little bit more context, then um, then I'll give them to you, inshallah. I'll give those things to you. So, yes, that's what we'll do. Perhaps I'll just start by just reading off some... You know, I'll talk a little bit about my, my morning routine, um, yeah, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. So, I guess um, we'll begin with ten. ten is a really good word to, to, to start off anything with in Arabic. So, ten أستيقظ حوالي يعني ممكن نصف ساعة قبل الصلاة الفجر أذهب للحمام وأتوضأ وأغسل أسناني وبعد ذلك ألبس ثوبي الأسود وأخرج من بيتي وأمشي إلى المسجد الأقرب من بيتي المسجد الأقرب من بيتي اسمه كلا ستريت الحمد لله هنا في نوث هامبتون عندنا مساجد كثيرة هنا ولله الحمد لكن المسجد الأقرب من بيتي اسمه كلا ستريت بعد ركعتين للسنة وركعتين فرض لصلاة الفجر أجلس في المسجد وأذكر الله سبحانه وتعالى بعد الدعاء وتكلم قليلا مع أصحابي أرجع إلى البيت وأشرب قهوة ثم ألعب مع ابني وأتكلم مع زوجتي 
Yeah, so that's that's about that's pretty much my morning. Yeah, that's that's pretty much my morning, any morning of the week. So um, so how do we begin? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't have a script. So I was just kind of blabbering. So I'll try to remember the things I said, <laughs> I said in future. In future, Sam, script videos and stuff. It would be very helpful. So what do we have? So, so we began with aadatan. Aadatan is a good word because it just means sort of usually. If you're ever talking about your daily routine, it's stuff you normally do. Oh yeah, by the way, a routine is a nivam. Um, it's the same word for a system. Um, those of you guys who have watched my my solar system video, um, my free video on the skill builder, where you have um, a nivam al shamsi, the the solar system. But um, a nivam al yomi is sort of the daily system or the daily routine. What I just kind of told you was my was nivami al sabahi. Yeah, it was kind of my, my, my morning routine. Um, good, so ten usually, something you usually do. I think I start with when I wake up, astayqadu, astayqadu. Um, yeah, it means to, just to wake up. Um, yeah, waqtul istiqad is the, the, the waking up time, waqtul istiqad. Yeah, the verb um, istayqadu, yastayqadu is a form 10 verb. And uh, yeah, it just means to, to, to wake up. The, uh, the, the root of it is used in some other ways, though. I know recently I was, um, I was teaching Surah Al-Kahf to one of my students. And we came across an ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, Yeah, so, And you would, you would think them, You would think that they were awake, but actually they were sleeping. Um, yeah, it's about um, the, 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 the people, the people of the cave, um, some like a righteous group of young lads who, um, who slept in the cave for like hundreds of years. And um, whilst they were sleeping, Allah kind of caused them to move, um, you know, move in certain, move in certain ways so that, their, so that their bodies would last and stuff like that for that amount of time. But um, yeah, there's, there, there's, there's, a, there's a part of it about, about the, the way in which Allah kind of kept them. Um, kept them safe and protected them for that amount of time. Um, you know, he, it, you know, he, he kind of says that if you were to see them, it would have been frightening. Even it would have been like they were, it would have been like they were crazy. Do you know what I mean? The people in the cave, if you had seen them, you know, even though they were sleeping, they were moving as if they were awake. Um, yeah, wa tahsabuhum ayqavan, and he used the term ayqav, which is obviously from the same root as the verb istayqava. Yeah, meaning to to wake up. I think I used the term. Um, Hawali, I think I used, um, which means approximately. Um, Hawali. Um, yeah, I said something like, um, yeah, استيقظوا Hawali نصف ساعة قبل صلاة الفجر, something something like that, like approximately half an hour before صلاة الفجر. That I suppose that <laughs> that that is like the that sort of the ideal. I mean, that's the ideal. I mean, some. You know, I'm only human in it. I'm not saying that I'm perfect at that, and you know, I do it every day. But, um, but yeah. So, so like a, about nisf of sa'ah, about half an hour before salat al fajr. Yeah, when you when you kind of talk about times, if you were to say like I wake up at six o'clock, um, you can just say astayqidu, and then you can just say the time a sa'ah to sabia, a sa'ah to sadisa, a sa'ah to khamisa, or whatever. Um, you don't need to say like at this time. There's not there aren't really any of the prepositions that. That mean at in the way that ours do. You could say fi or something maybe, but but you tend to not. You can just say a sa'at or sabia or whatever. You just say the hour, um, yeah, that you're talking about. Um, I deliberately did use the verb um, tawadda, um because I have a student who recently asked me about this, so I thought I'd include it in the podcast. Um, so um, so quite often students learn the verb um, the verb ghasala, um, which means to wash. Um, you know, you can say, you know, أغسل أسناني, I, I brush my teeth. In Arabic, you literally say you wash your teeth. Um, yeah, أغسل وجهي, you know, I, I wash my face or whatever. Um, but but actually, with the, with the term wudu, um, well, we don't use the term غسل. So so what is actually the term wudu from? Yeah, the, there is a verb توضع. Um, yeah, and it's the mutawadda, the the place where you do the wudu, your wuz wuzu room, the mutawadda. Um, yeah, the, the the place in which you do your, um, you know, you do your wudu. But um, yeah, tawadda'tu is the word we use in the past. I made wudu, tawadda'tu. And uh, but we actually do it in an Islamic context. We do actually use the term ghasala for when we're doing ghusl. Um, sort of wudu is sort of your minor ablution. I think we call it just when you. When you wash, like normally, hands, 
you know, hands, mouth, nose, face, etc. Before you do any of your salah. But um, your ghusl is a, is like a, a major one. Like if, um, yeah, there's a number of different reasons why why you why you have to do ghusl. But um, yeah, but the ghusl is like a full full shower. Really, your ghusl is. But uh, but it's not the term that you use for having a shower. Um, in 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 Arabic, the term which we use in fusha is um istahamma istahamma, and the noun from which is istihmam. Um, yeah, istahamma, um, astahimmu or something like that, astahimmu. Um, yeah, to to have a shower or to take a bath, you, you use that. Hence, why the word hammam is um yeah is the is the the bathroom or the shower or whatever. Um, cool. Yeah, so that's that's the that's the where we get the word wudu from and and what a ghusl is and what um istahamma is. Um, did I think did I talk about what I wear? Elbisu. Um. Yeah, elbisu. I think I might have said thobi or something. Thobi al abyad, my my white thobi or thobi al aswed. I I only have a black and a white one, so I wouldn't have said thobi al azraq, a blue one. I would like a blue one though. Um, if anyone is listening, if you own a a, a thob company, then do you fancy sponsoring the podcast, which about four people listen to? Then um then come down and sponsor the podcast. Uh, it's probably not the best thing to sponsor if you're a thob company, it's a medium that no one can see. But give me a blue thobe anyway. So um yeah, and then and then I and then I like I think a number of times in that I probably dropped the useful phrase wabada thalik and, and after that. But but pretty better is to say thumma and then. Ba'da thalik is fine as well. It's just in my sort of habit that I say ba'da thalik. In Amiya people tend to say ba'din. Wabadin Wabadin and a rohit al gamia or whatever. Wabadin Wabadin and a Ba'din and a kilitil al Aish will fool. وبعدين در وبعدين أنا رحت على ال على ال المدرسة بإعامية فويا. but uh, yeah we don't say بعدين we don't tend to say بعدين in فصحى we tend to say بعد بعد ذلك أو ثم um, to sort of mean and then and then after that. Um, probably said أمشي I I walk to أمشي إلى المسجد. Um, I talked about us having a number of, of, of quite a lot of mosques here in Northampton, but we don't really. We have about five or six, I think. But the closest one, did I say Al Aqrab, Al Masjid Al Aqrab? Yeah. So as yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I did. I did. I said Al Masjid Al Aqrab Minni. So when you use the verb, um, there there is a verb Qaraba to be close to something, um, but um, we say Qarib close Min. You always say like close from it. Um, you don't say close to it. You don't say Qaribun Ila. You don't say close to it. Um, which which often confuse students because when you say ba'id, which means far, you say the opposite. You have to say ba'id an. You say far from it, and that's the same with any derived verbs as well. Um, any derived verbs like that, there there is a verb, um, iqtaraba, iqtaraba, to come close to something, and you would use min as well with that as well. As, as you also have the verb ibtada, to to make yourself far from something, ibtada. You know, abtaidu an. I I sort of distance myself from something. Abtaidu an. Whatever I distance myself from, you know, abtaidu an, you know, abtaidu an hadhi al fikra. You know, I, I distance myself from this idea or something like that. Um, yeah, but the masjid that I go to is Clare Street. Um, may Allah bless the brothers there. Um, yeah, Clare Street Mosque. That's where I pray in Northampton. If any of you guys are ever down, come through to Clare Street Masjid. You'll see me there. Um, cool. Next, um, what did I say? Probably something about coming back to my house, maybe. Don't know if I'd have just said "adhabu ila bayti" or "arja'u ila bayti." The verb "raja'a" means to 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 return. It can it can it can uh, confuse you when you hear Egyptians say it. I remember playing football with some Egyptians. I remember hearing them say "irja'a" to to mean like like come back. You know what I mean like yeah when, yeah. I was playing football and as as it happens when you're playing football with people who are terrible at it like me, you all end up out of position and everyone sort of just runs up and wants to just run around after the ball and. And uh, when you realise that there's no one in defence, I've got eight Egyptians saying irga, irga. But yeah, arjaro, arjaro el abeti. No, I, I go back to my house. Well, I said I must have. I said it definitely says something about drinking coffee. Well, ashrabu qahwaten kathiraten or something like that. Probably, I drink a, I drink a lot of coffee. I'm a man who can put away eight cups of coffee in a day. No problem, not a problem. Eight cups of coffee in a day. In fact. In fact, I've become something that I hate really because 
I drink so much coffee and I enjoy coffee so much that I've started to like not enjoy instant coffee anymore. Um, yeah, for, for those of you guys who are in America, I don't think you guys really do instant coffee. You guys tend to do filter coffee and stuff, don't you? But here in the UK, we have instant coffee. It's like it's like dry sort of um, granules of coffee that we get and you just pour hot water on it. Um, I can't drink that anymore. And I, I always thought I never want to be a person like that. I never want to be such a snob that I can't just drink instant coffee but I buy I am a, I am a snob now and I you know I can't drink it and it, it, even sometimes if I go to if I go to like a Costa or something I need to ask them to put an extra shot in I don't know when it'll end I don't know if I'll end up just having like four shots and stuff you know and then being able to go to sleep afterwards because I'm so immune to it afterwards but anyway أشرب قهوة قهوة كثيرة not just قهوة واحدة never just one coffee um ثم um, hopefully I said thumma at some point in there, because it's a good word. Al'abu ma'a ibni. Yeah, I think... annani qultu. Al'abu ma'a ibni. I think I said al'abu ma'a ibni. I play with my son. Um, yeah, I play with my son. My son, I've got, I've got a little boy, he's two, a little monster. Um, yeah, and he loves a good, um, he loves a good little wrestle. I don't know if it's all two-year-old boys, but he wakes up really grumpy like he wakes up and he just scowls he comes into my bedroom and scowls at me anyway but yeah i love i love just rough him up a little bit give him a little wrestle um wa atakallamu ma'a so um i think that was the last thing i said so and i i speak speak with my wife um yeah that's it that's that's pretty much my morning really i'd like to start working out in the morning as well but but really what i'm waiting for on the, at the moment is to start going and training jiu jitsu that's what i want to want to do i used to train all the time i loved it but um yeah so that's kind of the um that's kind of the the thing that i said um ten good word to have means usually hawali means approximately um istaiqadha um tawadda ghassala istahamma um one one other thing that's probably a good one to know, just, just as it comes to mind, I'll just reel off a few others. Um, so there's a verb, ضبط, ضبط المنبه. So ضبط المنبه is to to put your alarm on, or is to set your alarm. The verb ضبط. Um, I've only I've not really heard of anything else. I've heard the term ضابط, which means like an officer or something like that. ضابط. But um, the verb ضبط actually just means to set or to kind of um, yeah to, to to press or to set something or something like that. Um, but المنبه is um is your alarm clock is to kind of set your alarm clock. ضبط المنبه. Um, yeah. ضبط ضبط المنبه للساعة الخامسة والنصف or something like that. I set my alarm clock to five to half past five or something like that. Um, another good another couple of good terms. Perhaps we'll finish on these. We'll try to keep the podcast under twenty minutes for today, in case you guys are commuting to work and you're nearly there. Um, another two good words are for saying early and late. So to do something early is a mubakir, mubakir. أنا وصلت إلى المسجد إلى المسجد مبكرا. I arrived at the I arrived at the mosque early. مبكرا, مبكر. Um, yeah, I think I think it actually is also the term bukra. In in Amiya they use it to mean tomorrow, but bukra is actually used in the Quran to mean the morning. Um, yeah, but um, but but I think I think that makes sense with it being mubakir is um is is early and that's why the morning is the bukra. Uh, next to be late is mutaakhir, mutaakhir. Um, yeah, to be late you could say wasaltu mutaakhiran. I, I arrived late. Um, yeah, intahitu wajibat mutaakhiran. I I I finished the homework late. You know. Um, yeah. So 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 those are good words for your for your daily routine in general. I hope that's been helpful for you guys. Um, yeah, a, a, bit, a bit of an unusual one for us. Usually I kind of tend to do more chat and uh, less tekellum. But today there was a little bit more tekellum than chat. And uh, and I think it would be nice to have strike a good balance. Okay, good. Guys, give me your feedback, inshallah, on what you thought of the podcast. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, yeah, come on board the other platforms as well. I'd love to speak to some of you guys on Instagram and on Facebook and stuff as well. Hit me up on Snapchat as well. I'm even on Snapchat as well. So all of them are Arabic with Sam. And uh, yeah, I'd, love, I'd I'd absolutely love to hear from you guys because uh, you guys are the team. You guys are the guys who make it happen. And uh, yeah, may Allah bless you guys. I love you guys the bits for turning up here on the podcast and enjoying it. Um, good. Let's call it a day. Sign out, guys. Have a really really nice week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.